It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Good morning, Charleston. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Thanks for joining me this morning. If this is your first time tuning in, we talk about all things real estate on this program. So what I like to do as a top agent in our market is reflect on what I experience on the day-to-day in this industry. Uh, If you've listened to my show before, you know I'm a big stats guy. I like to talk a lot about what's going on in our local market and uh, reflect on how that affects you should you be interested in buying, selling, or investing in real estate in the area, or if you just like to stay up to date with what's going on in the real estate industry. Uh, A few housekeeping items. If you'd like to reach out to me, I am a real estate agent during the week. Uh, Would be happy to work with you in any form or fashion, whether it be buying, selling, investing, or if you just have a general knowledge question or you want to bounce some ideas off of me, feel free to contact me. My number is 843-345-1273. 843-345-1273, or you can go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. That website allows you to search the MLS, take a look at everything I have for sale, everything I've sold, read some testimonials from past clients, and if you're thinking about selling your house, click on the Sell Your Home tab. I've got some information there on what I do to market my properties for sale, and I also have some information on my 59-day home sale guarantee. And that very simply states that I will sell your home in 59 days or less, or I'll sell it for half my commission, 4.5% commission. So again, the website for that, listingsincharleston.com. Um, <laughs> I was, you can't get any closer to coming to the radio station uh, before your show starts. It was a kind of a photo finish for me getting here this morning. Um and if you listen to my show, you know that I just, uh, my wife and I just had a little girl. And uh, before I left the house, you know, she asked, you know, can you change the diaper? And would you mind getting me some water? And oh, can you throw some oatmeal in the microwave? And <laughs> you just can't say no to those types of things. So I uh, got here just a few seconds before the show started. And uh, I apologize in advance if I'm a little groggy this morning. If anybody uh, has had a child, they know that uh, sleeping throughout the night is uh, just not the norm. It's just not what happens anymore. So uh, my my work hours are even more unorthodox than they have been in the past being real estate agent. So uh, I tell you what, let me, t- let me tell you what I want to talk about uh, over the next hour. And I will say that I am taking calls today. So if you'd like to reach out to me, the number here in the studio, 843-556-1250, 843-556-1250. I am taking calls. Would love an opportunity to hear some stories from you, answer some questions you might have. Uh, and, and just talk through maybe some situations that you faced or are facing. Again, that number, 843-556-1250. What I want to do first, because August's uh, stats just came out, is I want to I go through those in this first segment. Uh, we'll take a break, and then last show, last weekend, I talked about ethics in real estate. And I feel like I, I just didn't have enough time to get across some points that I wanted to make. So I'm actually going to spend some more time on that this weekend because I think that it's important. You know, ethics in real estate is something that I take very seriously. Um, and it's a very serious, punishable um, offense for real estate agents that break the rules. Uh, so I want to talk about some of those issues. I want to talk about some ethical dilemmas that real estate agents face on a day-to-day basis and how they should handle them versus sometimes how they are handled. Uh, a little bit later on, I want to talk about negotiating deals. Um, we have obviously had a great market so far this year. And when I'm dealing with real estate agents that provide me with a contract on a house um, and it's poorly written, it obviously allows us the ability to kind of dictate that process and puts us in the driver's seat automatically. So I want to talk about negotiating deals. Uh, it's something that for whatever reason, this year, more so than others, I, I just feel like I'm getting more sloppy contracts. Uh, I'm getting offers that aren't being properly presented. And we're taking advantage of the situation, and I feel like our clients are are winning, quite frankly. Uh, so I want to talk about that. And then lastly, I want to talk about what happens when a deal falls through. Buyer doesn't get financing. Buyer doesn't like the home inspection. So on and so forth. 
um, I want to talk about how we can rebound so that uh, we are positioned for success. So that's what I want to talk about here over the next hour. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, want to chat, have a story you want to share, 843-556-1250 is the number here in the studio. So let's talk about the market. You know, the market is still doing very well. We're approaching that time of year where things start to slow down a little bit. We start to see a overall decrease in showings. We typically find that less buyers are in the market right now versus you know, the peak of our season, which is the summer. Um, we tend that properties take a little bit longer to sell. It's just what happens this time of year. There's just less buyers out there. And, and I think what we need to understand is that as a market, we draw in all different types of buyers. Of course, we have the primary residents, people that want to buy and sell, stay here locally or move to the area. We also have a large population locally, regionally, and nationally of investors that invest in the Charleston area. A uh, classic example would be the institutional investor, American Homes for Rent. They own 500 homes in the Charleston area. They are an institutional investor, meaning they are a uh, conglomerate of investors that buy and hold real estate and rent them out. And they've chosen Charleston as an area to do that out of anywhere else in the country, by the way. So we've got the investors, we've got the primary residents, we have a large second home market. You know, we've got Isle of Palms, Wild Dunes, uh, Sullivan's Island, Seabrook Island, Kiowa Island. Uh, and then, of course, uh, lastly, we have the people that are really interested in historic properties. We have those as well. So we have all different types of people that invest in Charleston in some form or fashion in real estate. And it's been a great year. So let me tell you how great of a year it's been. If we look at, and then I'll start first with price because that's what everybody loves. If we look at pricing so far this year versus the year-to-date numbers in 2013, the median sales price is up 6%. Keep in mind that the price in Charleston in 2013 in many areas rose double digits. So we've had a really nice increase in pricing over the past 18 to 24 months. And the reason for that is if we look at inventory, inventory continues to go down. Right now, in the Tri-County area for single-family homes, we have 5.4 months of inventory. That is a seller's market. If we look at the condos and townhouses, we have 5.2 months of supply. And what does that number mean? Well, a normal, balanced market is between six and eight months worth of inventory, meaning if no other homes came on the market, it would take six to eight months to sell off the existing supply. So at six to eight months worth of inventory, there's no real upward or downward pressure on pricing. Uh, There's no oversupply or undersupply of homes. It's just a normal balanced market, and we can expect appreciation on an annual basis to be somewhat in line with inflation. You know, expect three, four percent increase in pricing. Now, if we look at, um, so that's that's what's going on with the months of supply. If we look at inventory, if we look at new listings, um, we have had 14,000 new listings this year. Last year, year to date, we had 13,500. So we've had a few more new listings hit the market this year than uh, this time last year. But if you look at our closings, we've sold 500 more homes. And if you look at the pending sales, pending sales meaning properties that are under contract that have not yet sold, uh, we've got a nice 9% increase there. So overall, market's doing great. If we look at the uh, amount of time it's taking to sell real estate right now, uh, it's about 74 days on average in the Tri-County area. That is down from 80 this time in 2013. And then last thing we, uh, we, we tend to look at are the percentage of original list price received. You know, If you list your home, how many percentage points off of your listing price can you expect? And so far this year, you are going to receive roughly 95% of your listing price. And keep in mind, that is across the board in all areas, in all different property types, and in all price ranges. So let's break that down uh, to the Tri-County area, Berkeley, Dorchester, and Charleston County. And again, if you have any questions about any of this, I am taking calls this morning, 843 556 1250 is the number here in the studio. And if you want more information on your neighborhood specifically, you'd like to know what your home is worth. Again, go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. Let's talk about the Tri-County area. Let's start first with Berkeley County. 
In Berkeley County, if you look at the single family home market, prices are up seven and a half percent. If you look at the condos and townhouses, they're up twelve percent. So there's a nice jump in Berkeley County. If you look at closings, closings are up thirteen percent, and new listings are up fourteen percent. So overall, a nice amount of activity in Berkeley County. Uh, We're seeing the price increases. Berkeley County was a little slow uh, to rise in price and just kind of catch up with Charleston County. Charleston County usually leads the way with regard to recovery in our market. They're the first to recover. They're the first to kind of dip down whenever we experience a hardship um, because there's all different types of properties in Charleston County. Um, I've got Ross on the line in North Charleston, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Ross, how can I help you today? Hey, Brian. Um, I was wondering about something. When you go on Zillow.com and you put my address down, Mm -hmm. it says that my house value is like $132,000. Okay. But like we have a neighborhood, and we have a real estate agent. She ran a comp score on my house, and it came back to my house is worth $158,000. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see, kind of get your idea, because I mean, you're in the business, so I wanted to see, like, where does Zillow get their number from, and, you know, why would it be such a big gap? I am so glad that you called about this issue, because this is one of my pet peeves in the real estate industry. Uh, this is something that I feel like I have focused on time and time again on this program, and, and your call is evidence that I might, I'm probably not talking about it enough. But Ross, this is what happens. Zillow, as a entity, um, has no idea the condition or the upgrades inside your house. The only thing they can go off of are similar homes in terms of size and location, what they sold for, and then they take into account uh, the trends in the marketplace. So they apply an algorithm to your house based on what hap- what's happening with pricing, what's happening with inventory. And they tell you what your house is worth right now. And then they've even gone a step further and they're going to give you a forecast to tell you what it's worth a year from now. But the bottom line is, unless the data that Zillow is using is accurate and fully up to date, there is no way Zillow can tell you what your house is worth. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've improved the property quite a bit. Yeah. And that's the that's just the frustrating thing when you see that and you're going, good Lord, man, what, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. no, and, and <laughs> I should be above water by now. I mean, you know, what the heck, you know? Yeah. And you know, the, the, the thing is, is websites like Zillow um, offer a lot of great information to buyers and to sellers. And I'm not going to dispute that, but I do have a very serious issue with, uh, with this particular function of Zillow because it's misleading. And a lot of people don't really understand how they come up with that number. And the most frustrating thing for me as a real estate agent that, you know, hey, I've been around for a while. I've been in the top 1% of agents here since 2009 is when I go to a listing appointment and I talk with a seller about the value of their house and we talk about the market, we talk about trends in the market and I suggest a price and they say, well, but Zillow says, you know, and then I have to talk to them, talk them through why the number is what it is on Zillow uh, versus what it actually is based on comparable properties. So, um, Ross, I appreciate the call and, and, uh, hopefully I've answered your question. And for those of you that are listening out there, uh, please do not use Zillow as a reliable source for the value of your home. It's, it's likely the most, uh, valuable asset you own. So if you want to know what your house is worth, give me a call 843-345-1273 or go to my website listings in charleston.com and I will give you a free appraisal, no cost, Uh, No obligation. Happy to tell you what your house is worth. We're going to take a quick break. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Find Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues next on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. WTMA. Now, here's more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Thanks again for tuning in this morning. Uh, If you'd like to reach out to me, I am taking calls this morning. The number here in the studio, 843-556-1250. 843-556-1250. If you'd like to reach out to me personally, if you have a real estate matter you'd like to discuss, you're considering buying, selling, or investing in real estate, 
Give me a call personally, 843-345-1273, or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com, and you can take a look at everything for sale by every real estate agent and every real estate company in the Tri-County area. You can also learn more about what I do to sell my properties for sale, and if you are considering selling, click on the Sell Your Home tab. You can learn more about my 59-day home sale guarantee at 4.5% commission. So I'll sell it in 59 days or less, or I'll sell it for half my commission. Again, the website for that, listingsincharleston.com. Um, want to get through the rest of the market stats, and then I want to switch gears here a little bit. And uh, we had Ross call in last last segment talking about Zillow pricing, and it's a great question, and I feel like, again, it's something that I've focused on in the past, but maybe it's something that I need to focus on on a more consistent basis because... You know, here's the deal. Although our market is doing very well right now, every single neighborhood is just a little bit different. And I've always said, and and you've heard the adage before, that real estate is local. It's hyper local, even. So I'm reading these stats, but if you want to know what's going on in your area, in your neighborhood, I actually have some really cool uh, technology and systems available to me that will keep you up to date on what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, so again, listingsincharleston.com is the website, uh, to send me that request. And I'm happy to set that up for you. Uh, no cost, no obligation, or just let me know. And I'll provide you with a pre uh, free appraisal on your house. Let you know what uh, your house is worth right now. So we talked about Berkeley County. We talked about how pricing in Berkeley County is up seven and a half percent for single family homes and 12% for condos and townhouses. And that although we've experienced a 13% increase in closing, we've also experienced a 15 or so percent increase in new listings. So uh, nice to see that Berkeley County is is catching up. Um, when we talk about Charleston County, we talk about you know our market in general. Most of the stats that we have come from Charleston County. It's just where most of the deals are. So if we look at Charleston County for single family homes, pricing is up five and a half percent on average, and uh, for condos it's six percent. And then if you look at closings, closings are up four percent. And new listings are uh, down a percent. So we continue to have inventory issues in Charleston County. I can tell you right now that I am working with all kinds of buyers uh, looking for property, uh, beachfront on Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, uh, Wild Dunes. We just can't find what we're looking for. Or there are sellers that are willing to sell, but they're still in them for too much money. So that is a real issue uh, that we're still facing in Charleston County. I mean, we've had recovery for the past 12 to 24 months, but we're still not at the point where sellers that bought at the height of the market can get out of the get out of the property, especially if they financed it 100% or they've taken out some equity line to quit it. But anyways, uh, Charleston County, again, it's doing well. Properties are selling faster. They're selling for more money. Uh, there is less choice out there. That will start to change as new construction finally uh, continues to pick up and we ramp up that inventory. I also will tell you that not only does it slow down this time of year, but I think, and uh, I, I might be putting my foot in my mouth a little bit, but this is just what I'm experiencing. And again, I'm, I, I do this quite often. I do this every day. I've been in the top 1% of agents here since 2009. What I'm starting to see is that we are starting to slow down a little bit in general. What I mean by that is that when we look at the double-digit increases we've had in pricing, over the past 12 to 24 months, especially in Charleston County, it's, an, it's, it's not a sustainable rate of growth, especially when it comes to pricing, especially when it's not fueled by a really strong job market, uh, wage increases, so on and so forth. Um, so I see us slowing down a little bit in, in terms of just the rate by which we are recovering. At some point, we're going to have to level off a little bit. And if you look at it on a, on a graph... It's certainly not um, an exponential growth pattern. It's peaks and valleys. And uh, over time, it hopefully will continue to rise. But I, th- I think that's what's happening is that our market continues to recover. Things are going very well. If you're selling your house, it's in good condition. You've priced it correctly. And you're working with an agent that understands the marketing process. You'll sell. Uh, let's talk about Dorchester County really quickly. And then let's switch gears here again. Uh, I'm in the studio. I'm taking calls. 843-556-1250 is the number here. Okay, getting to Dorchester County. Dorchester County has seen a 6% increase in single-family home pricing 
And the condo and townhouse market has seen a 4% increase in the average sales price. If we look at closings, closings are up 5% for single-family homes, and they're up 11% for condos and townhouses. And then if we look at new listings, new listings across the border are up about 3%. Properties are selling on average in about two months, and they're receiving on average 96% of their asking price for single-family homes, 95% if it's a condo or townhouse. So overall, market's doing really well. I do want to say, however, that it is not all sunshine and rainbows and candy-covered uh, unicorn kisses out there. It's still a tough market in many areas, uh, and you have to understand what's going on in your specific market, and you have to be working with somebody that's going to keep a constant eye on the market. It, you know, Pricing is not a one-time discussion when you list your house for sale. It is a continuous discussion because the market always changes, and we have to be up to date on what's happening in your area. So, again, any questions about what's going on in our industry, what's going on in our market, you want to know what your home is worth, you want to just be kept up to date with new listings, closings, and economic data in your area, feel free to give me a call, 843-345-1273, or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. All right, I want to uh, talk about something that I talked about last weekend, and um, I, I just feel like I didn't do as good a job as I wanted to do in getting all of these points across, mainly because I just ran out of time, poor time management for me. But anyways, these are some ethical dilemmas that we as real estate agents face on almost a day-to-day in our industry. So I'm going to run through some of these examples, and I'm going to actually read off the uh, Realtor Code of Ethics uh, sentence that best applies to the situation. If you have had some sort of issue Uh, and you want to call in and you want to talk about it first, please do not name any real estate agents' names. But I would love to hear your story, uh, and I'd love to reflect on that and see if there's a way that I can share some information with you on maybe how things should have been done differently. Um, Number here, 843-556-1250. That's the number here in the studio. All right, so the first, uh, first dilemma that a lot of people deal with in our industry is, you know, should I disclose that? So let me give you the scenario. A seller lists their house, and um, prior to listing their house, they got a termite inspection done. And the termite inspector said, you know, it looks like you've got some termite activity underneath your house. Um, I suggest you fix that. And the seller disputes it. They say, well, actually, we've never had any sort of termite issues, and, and I just can't believe that we would, we would have termite issues. So, um, you know, thank you, but no thank you. So in sitting down with that seller and and filling out the property condition disclosure statement, which is required by South Carolina uh, in the event you sell your property, you have to disclose all the material defects about your house. So the question is, should I disclose that, Uh, especially if the seller disputed the issue? And the Realtor Code of Ethics says that realtors shall avoid exaggeration, misrepresentation, or concealment of pertinent facts relating to the property or the transaction. So... Uh, the risk, of course, with withholding pertinent facts uh, from buyers is that not only do you as a seller, but also the real estate agent, if you are aware of it, uh, face penalties, fines, uh, potential suspension, expulsion from the real estate industry. So um, obviously the best thing to do is that if there is a defect that you know about, disclose it. It is much better to say, hey, there might be an issue and I'm willing to investigate it further rather than sweeping something under the rug and having the buyer find out about it after the fact, and then you're caught in a really bad situation. Uh, real estate agents, of course, deal with that all the time. Number two, uh, here's the scenario. You're hosting an open house for your client, and uh, a woman seems really interested in the property and asks a lot of questions about the house, local schools, uh, proximity to public transportation. Uh, she also asks why the seller wants to move and why they're selling. Well, as a real estate agent, of course you want to provide that potential buyer with pertinent information and you want to make them feel comfortable about the house um, and you want to get them interested. But when you are working with a real estate agent, that real estate agent owes you confidentiality. In other words, they are not going to share your specific reason for selling with potential buyers or agents unless that seller says, hey, it's okay to tell them why I'm selling But as a real estate agent, I cannot, should not, will not 
tell agents or buyers why my seller is selling. Frankly, it's none of their business. Okay, we are here to buy and sell real estate, not to uh, dissect a seller's personal issue, especially if it's a distress issue like divorce or um, you know we've lost our job or we're moving and we have to move in the next sixty days. Because sharing that information can have a direct impact on the offer that you receive and the buyer's perception of how motivated that seller might be. So we deal with that all the time. Why is the seller selling? You know, I, I, have, I have a lot of listings. I sell a lot of listings. And I have a bunch of agents that call and ask that question. And my very simple response was, hey, you know, I can't tell you why they're selling. But uh, let me tell you why I think this is, is a great house. So anyways, there's another dilemma that we face on a day-to-day basis And a lot of real estate agents out there, at the drop of a hat, will throw their client under the bus, tell them exactly why they're selling, um, tell them how negotiable they are. And the reason I know that is because I ask. If I'm representing a buyer, I'm going to call the listing agent and I'm going to ask the same question. And you would be shocked at the number of agents that divulge information about their client that hurts them in the end because I use it as a negotiations tool And that's why, typically, we win. Dilemma number three, ethics and advertising. Here's a scenario. You're looking for a way to differentiate yourself from the competition, and uh, you give your marketing materials a little bump up. You say that you are the number one real estate agent for you, or the number one real estate agent in your neighborhood, or your number one real estate agent. I would say that (laughs) putting the number one real estate agent in front of just about everything is probably the most overused tagline in our industry. Obviously, there can only be one. And the number of agents that use old data or spin that tagline in some form or fashion so that it's it's not really saying anything is astounding. And frankly, if you're a client and you want to hire a top real estate agent, you want to hire the best of the best, Uh, you want to hire somebody that's been in the top 1% of agents, then as a client, or excuse me, as a customer, you should ask that agent, well, can I see your stats? Why is it that you're number one? And you would be shocked at the number of agents that just throw that on there, but they don't have any backup. You know, I would love to see on some of these listing presentations where I go up against another agent and they say that they're number one. I would love to see the reaction of those agents when the seller asks them to show them their sales for the year. I had this happen um, at this point probably two weeks ago. I went up against uh, another agent. This particular agent uh, is very well known in our market. And uh, they put down a uh, list of properties that they have sold. And they put down a list of how they rank versus how all other top real estate agents in the market rank. And of course, the issue with that is that when you look at our MLS rules and regulations and you look at our code of ethics, it is okay for a real estate agent to share factual market statistics on how many homes I sell on a weekly, monthly, annual basis. It's okay to share my market share, but I cannot share other agents' production. But this particular agent walked in and said, they just basically their marketing plan was they put down a piece of paper on the table and they said, here's how many homes I've sold. Here's how many homes all the other real estate agents sell. Hire me. Obviously, it was a very unethical move. It goes against our MLS rules and regulations. And the issue with it is that uh, it wasn't even true. The stats that they were using were out to, they were out of date and they put such strict uh, guidelines on the number of homes that they sold, it was like they might as well have said they were the number one real estate agent that sold homes on a, tu- a, a rainy Tuesday in North Charleston between 150 and 200,000 in 2012. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's obviously an exaggeration, but that's kind of what happened. So anyways, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. I'm going to talk about two more ethical issues that uh, I want to discuss. Would love to take your calls. Would love to hear your stories. The number here in the studio, 843-556-1250. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Stay tuned for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. WTMA. 
You're listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Welcome back. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Thanks again for joining me this morning. I am taking calls in the studio this morning. My number, 843-556-1250 here in the studio, 843-556-1250. Again, if you'd like to reach out to me, if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, you're considering buying, selling, investing in real estate, anything I can do to help you personally, feel free to go to my website and contact me. That website is listingsincharleston.com, listingsincharleston.com. Again, you can go on that website. You can learn more about my 59-day home sale guarantee. If you're considering selling your home, I'll sell it in 59 days or less, or I'll sell it for half my commission, 4.5% commission. There are some guidelines to that program, so contact me, and I'll be happy to share that with you. I want to get uh, right back to what we were talking about, which are ethical issues that we as real estate agents face on a day-to-day basis. And then I also want to talk about uh, the last thing about this uh, show this hour is negotiating contracts, because it's something that, uh, for whatever reason, this particular year seems to have been the year that I get a lot of sloppy contracts. And hey, it's worked out well for us, because... We kind of take advantage of the situation and, and use it as an opportunity for my clients to quote unquote win in the transaction. But we'll talk about that toward the latter part of uh, this this hour. Final two dilemmas that I want to share with you that we face on a day to day basis. Let's say that I have a listing, represent the seller, and uh, I, I represent uh, the seller, but I also have a team of real estate agents that work for me. I have four buyer agents, I also have administrative staff. And my job is to represent the seller. It is the buyer agent's job to represent the buyer. Uh, We are very clear with one another as a company and as a brokerage that we do not share our clients' personal information. It goes back to what we were talking about last segment about confidentiality. I am here to represent my seller to the best of my ability, and my buyer agent is there to represent the buyer to the best of their ability. But what happens when you get multiple offers on a property and an offer comes from my buyer agent and it also comes from a third party buyer agent at a different company? Well, the issue is uh, people might construe that as I'm going to give an unfair advantage to my buyer agent over the other agent at a different company. And so the um, Code of Ethics uh, for the uh, National Association of Realtors states that obligations to the client are primary, but does not relieve realtors of their obligation to treat all parties honestly. So if another agent asks if the buyer that uh, has made the offer in a multiple offer situation is represented by me or by my team, then I have to divulge that information. I have to be fair and honest and let them know that, yes, the other buyer is represented by my company. Having said that, I'm going to give both buyers until, let's say, 5 o'clock the next business day to present their highest and best offer. And at that point, we are going to choose one offer to either accept or negotiate further. But we're not going to pin people against one another, and we're not going to show favoritism uh, between one company over the other. We deal with that more often than you would think because... We do a lot of marketing on our properties. We show our properties a lot. And typically, we make a lot of offers on our own listings. Uh, Last scenario. This actually happened to me uh, last week. I had a buyer contact me, and they said that uh, their agent was out of town, but they've already seen the property, and they want to make an offer on it. And I said, well, is there anybody else on that real estate agent's team or anybody else in that company that you can get to write the offer? So they made some calls and they said, no, I can't reach anybody and my agent is out of the country. Um, Can you write the offer? And obviously, if this agent is represented, then I'm going to write an offer for a buyer that I don't represent. I'm not their agent. But the Realtors Code of Ethics states that realtors shall not engage in any practice or take any action inconsistent with the exclusive relationship recognized by law that other realtors have with clients. So in other words, if a buyer asks me to write an offer regardless of whether or not they're represented by another agent and I represent the seller, it is my duty to write that offer. I have to present that offer to my seller and I have to understand that if there's an agreement between that buyer and their agent, that the compensation is going to be uh, how it's structured in that agreement. Now, I will say that 
if a buyer wants me to make an offer for them on my own listing and that agent's going to be out of town for an extended period of time and I can reach that agent, I'm more than likely going to say, hey, I'd like to have one of my buyer agents on my team help you with this and we'd like a referral fee in return if we're going to do all this work. They don't have to agree to that, obviously. I still have to present the offer to my seller and represent my seller. Uh, but that uh, that was an interesting scenario that I dealt with last week, and and that's how you handle it. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about negotiating contracts, and we're going to spend the rest of uh, this show on negotiating contracts because it's something that, frankly, if if you're a real estate agent, I know a lot of real estate agents listen to this program. If you're a real estate agent and you don't have the ability to write a bulletproof contract that protects your client and that clearly gets the point across as to the expectations of that buyer, then you frankly are doing your customer or client a disservice. I can't tell you the number of contracts I've received this year that were poorly written, that had ambiguous language in it, that allowed me to get out of the contract or that allowed them to get out of the contract for any reason whatsoever. Um, that had, you know, I had a contract come in a few weeks ago with a hundred dollars in earnest money. It was a half a million dollar house. Of course I had to present the offer, but the seller said, get real. Um, these are the types of things I'm talking about. I had another contract come in from the broker in charge of a company. Obviously I'm not going to name names, but the contract looked like it was a new agent that wrote it. There was information in there that you're just not supposed to put in contracts. Like you can't put to be determined on a closing date. We've got to have a hard closing date to work towards. Can't have open-ended contracts. But anyways, that's, I'm going to set the stage for this and I'm going to take another break. And when I come back, we're going to talk about some of these issues and I'm going to give you 10 tips to negotiating deals in this market so that you get the winning side of the deal. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Again, taking calls in the studio for the last few minutes of this hour. 843-556-1250 is the number here. And again, if you'd like to reach out to me, listingsincharleston.com is my website. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. We'll be right back. Have a real estate question? Ask Brian Beatty. Send him an email, lowcountryhomesales at gmail.com. That's lowcountryhomesales at gmail.com. WTMA. Now, the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues on Charleston's Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Thanks again for joining me this morning. We are uh, in the final minutes of our hour of this show. And again, I am taking calls here in the studio. So if you have anything you'd like to discuss real estate related, give me a buzz. 843-556-1250. We'd love to hear your story and uh, maybe answer a question or two. Uh, If you'd like to reach out to me, if you're considering buying, selling, investing in real estate, I would love the opportunity to speak with you and and work with you. I can be reached personally on my cell phone, 843-345-1273. Call or text that number or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com, and you can take a look at everything for sale, take a look at my inventory of homes that I represent, everything that I've sold, and if you're considering selling your house, click on the Sell Your Home tab. You can learn more about my 59-day home sale guarantee at 4.5% commission. I'll sell your home in 59 days or less, or I'll sell it for half my commission. Details are on the website for guidelines and for more specific information, you've got to contact me. Um. Let's talk about uh, the final thing that I wanted to talk about on this show, which is negotiating contracts. And when we left, we were, we were talking about some of the issues that I've faced this year. And for whatever reason, I have had a string of fairly sloppy contracts sent to me over the past few months. And I was watching Shark Tank last night, one of my favorite shows. I love Shark Tank and I love The Profit, if you guys have ever seen that. It's a guy that's basically a venture capitalist that buys other businesses, failing businesses with great opportunity. And I was watching Shark Tank last night, and Mark Cuban said something pretty profound, and uh, I, I thought that it was just great. He said, when you walk into the Shark Tank, you look for the sucker. And if you can't find the sucker, the sucker is you. And I think that that applies so well to our real estate industry, because when an offer is made on a property... Obviously, you have the buyer agent, the listing agent, the buyer, and the seller. 
And let's just say as an example that I'm a listing agent and I receive an offer from a buyer. First of all, because I know agents are listening to this program, the worst thing you can do as a real estate agent is just email an agent an offer without explanation. You just email them and, hey, here's an offer on your property. No call. Might get a text. But you just get an email. You, you know, As an agent, I'm just checking my email. Oh, look, there's an offer on one of my properties. That's like the worst thing you can do. What you know, I I knock on million dollar listing and house hunters and some of these HGTV programs uh, because of how staged they are and because of how fake they are and because they, in my opinion, kind of skew the way that our industry is run on a day to day basis. But I will say that the one thing that I appreciate that they do, especially on million dollar listing, as as staged as it is, is they present the offer, and in presenting an offer you clearly get the point across that this is why we're making the offer we've made. This is our justification for it. And this is what's important to us. You'd be amazed at how many agents don't do that. They don't present their contracts. So then it allows me as a listing agent to call that agent and ask some very specific questions designed to better understand the contract and why they wrote it the way that they did. But really what I'm doing is I'm finding out how motivated those buyers are and I'm finding out what's important to them so that we can counter the offer successfully to our benefit. And again, you'd be amazed at the number of agents that reveal information that hurts their client. It goes against the confidentiality agreement in their uh, buyer agency contract. And really when I ask questions that I don't necessarily need to know the answer to, but I find it out anyways, of course I tell my client because it helps us come up with a strategy to inevitably sell this property for the most money. And that's something that a top real estate agent does for their clients. And that's something that is learned over time and it only comes from experience. You know, I get new agents that write offers on my property and it's just shocking to me how easy it is to take advantage of that situation, take control and, and basically dictate how the negotiations are going to go. doesn't happen all the time. And of course, there are plenty of experienced agents out there that uh, are great at what they do that are very difficult to negotiate with because they understand the market. And at the end of the day, the buyer's going to offer what the buyer's going to offer. It's just our job as to whether or not that's acceptable to us. But let me give you 10 things um, to think about when negotiating a contract. First and foremost... Be friendly, but do not be their friend. When a buyer or a seller tries to get you to sympathize with their situation or cut them a break, or can you just give me a little more time, or you know, can you just throw in that couch? I mean, you know, can you throw in the whatever the case might be? Whenever they're trying to have you sympathize with their situation, it's going to cost you something, and it's going to be time or money. Number two. Uh, you have to know the market. Frankly, there is no excuse for not having a good pulse on your section of the market. That's what's going to help you justify an offer, and it's going to reinforce decisions made along the way because you know what the house is worth and you know what the trends in the market are. Number three, you have to be able to work with an agent that can write a bulletproof contract. You have to be able to protect yourself. You have to leave yourself some outs in the event things go sour and you have to be able to clearly uh, present that contract to the other party so that's number four present the actual offer to justify your position number five you have to have realistic expectations you know the the days of offering 20 30 40 percent below listing price uh, are, are you know the more unrealistic the offer the more difficult it is going to become for your agent to justify that position Number six, don't push people too far. Everybody has a breaking point. Number seven, communicate along the way. That's probably the biggest complaint in our industry is that people just don't communicate very well. Uh, number eight, don't let the emotions get the best of you. Be the bigger person and make sure that uh, you are approaching the transaction with reasonable expectations. Number nine, rely on your team of professionals. And of course, number 10, always have a backup plan. So this is it. I'm out of time. This has been the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Again, call me, 843-345-1273, or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. Have a great weekend. Join us 
for another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show next Saturday morning from 8 till 9. Contact Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. 843-345-1273.